What up my freaks, Rowanus Insight here with part 8 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Grimgore Ironhide campaign. So as we saw last time, in an absolutely glorious stand, Grimgore's army had to actually fight for its life. Pretty much the first time in this campaign where it was really sorely tested, as Lewin, Leon, Kerr, and Raponce de Leoness struck at his army with a pile of Bretonians, knights, and peasants alike. Unfortunately for them, the Black Orc's armor was too thick, and they stood tall, destroying the armies of Lewin and absolutely decimating the faction. If you guys recall, when we first landed here, Kurun was at strength rank 2 after R1. Now it is at strength rank 92, so it was a pretty darn big blow. In addition to that, we have the Spider Army approaching, though of course they need a few more buffs to get where they need to be and another army nearly complete or possibly even complete i can't recall my memory doesn't last the day guys come on give me a break anyway uh this time around we'll be headed towards kuran and we're gonna see what we can do about defending the borders uh, that we've acquired for ourselves uh we've already done the trespass thing so i think grimgore i guess i'm gonna go past all this you can't catch anybody can you Huh. I, oh, wow. Uh, you can move really far, can't you, Gorkill? Uh, and this army is in march stance, and this little army is in march stance, and... Hmm. Very much hmm. And Grimgore could actually reinforce one of these armies if we get to them. I can't quite remember if... This army... Okay, okay, okay. Wait, uh, let, me, let me figure this out. Let me figure this out. First of all, Gorkill, I think we're going to try to send the Crimson Killers to kill this army. This seems like the thing to do to me. It's a bunch of peasant mobs. They are buffed to 28 melee attack, but can they take a unit of Crimson Killers? Somehow, I don't think so. But anyway, let's uh, let's let's figure this out in a bit. Let us do whatever else we need to do. And while we're doing it, and it looks like we did once again reach that engagement threshold. So once again, an hour long episode is here. And the offer stands 300 likes and 50 comments. And the next episode will be an hour long as well. Uh, we are going to not take one unit of Orc biggins, and we're not going to take those moon howlers like so. Nobber, you are now at 20 out of 20. Why? What did I do wrong? Oh, I took the I took the moon howlers. My bad. Give those back. All right, then we will put the teeth robbers. Of the Goblin Wolf Chariots in here, so we have three Goblin Wolf Chariots, three Goblin Wolf Riders, and three Pump Wagons uh, with a Regiment of Renown leading them all. And the reason why I went for these three types of units is because they all share an upgrade path, so yeah. Uh, they'll be upgraded together and they should hopefully work nicely together. And you're going to go into March Stance, Krug a Beard Taker. You're going to transfer to Ugg the Recruiter, this one Boar Boy Biggin. And if anybody can think of a better, more orcish name for Recruiter, I would appreciate it. We did have the Gang Presser in the, uh, uh, in, uh, the Aranessa campaign. And Recruiter just doesn't sound orcish enough to me. Alright, now bros, stay there for a little bit when your fightiness is dropping, which might be a little bit of a problem, but, uh, whatever. We should also, if possible, try to replace you with a yeah with a shroom grower but you know we have other things to focus on right now uh gore kill i'm gonna move you in a second my friend and i believe that's all so let's do buildings now what do we have here whale coast is it finally time to upgrade the Greenskin Stronghold here? Yes, even though we're losing 2k per turn. I'm sick of looking at it, so we'll upgrade it. Uh, Kinkwata, you will be to tier 5 in two turns, so we'll leave you alone. Leoness, you are fine. In fact, I don't think we need the defenses at Castle Leoness. Uh, where is Barfleur? Okay, Barfleur and Merton are still kind of potential attacks from an enemy. Yeah, I'm not going to touch those. Uh, Sherwield Forest, we could upgrade you, or in four turns we could upgrade you to tier five. Yeah, let's just do that when we reach you. Yeah. Uh, Slay, let's get you those idols for growth. 
Mm. And where is Barley Mott? Do we even bother building the defensive structure here? I'm not sure. I I'm not even sure it's needed a saw. You know what? Let's not do that. I think what we need right now is to fund this. So if a few of these territories get taken over, we'll be okay. I'd rather make more money. I think it's more important. And frankly, Kesselongi... Well, Kesselongi is right out on the front of everything, so maybe we'll wait on that one, but uh, the others, definitely. Speaking of Longi, let's get you that pile of shiny stuff, and let's get you them Raiden stashes immediately. We'll repair for gun. Though I don't know whether it'll stick around. Idols for you, and I believe that's all we can do. Oh, I guess if since we canceled this stuff, we can, you know, build other stuff. Uh, go for the raiding stashes, and you cannot go for the iron, so go for the pile of shiny stuff. Of course, this will cause some public order issues, but I think our public order is in reasonably okay shape right now, and should continue to be so in the near future. All right, I think... Well, that is good. Do we, or are we able to collect money from either of these places? No, nah, it doesn't look like it. It probably wouldn't give us too much right now. You gotta give them a few turns. Oh, actually, you make 540, though at minus 15. Hmm. We have to keep brag about the boss on, though. Unless, wait, you're in for a gun. Not in this territory. Oh, maybe we don't. Maybe we can pop you into Camp Ruckus to counteract this a little bit. Not so much for Castellongi, and in fact, we don't have the full territory anyway. Anyway, anyway, we're gonna take a chance here, a big chance, and we're going to give you items. Giant Blade, Armor of Destiny, the best that we have, a Potion of Healing, and... I'm too lazy to move the Talismans of Endurance around, so let's give you an Opal Amulet, I guess. A little bit more melee defense, if nothing else. And in panic mode, you can activate it for some sweet damage resistance. And then we'll get the Razor Standard. Or the Crimson Killers. Yeah, that'll work. I wish we had another Banner of Swiftness. And uh, get you the Backstabber, get you the... Not the Idol Carver. Can't get the Pit Boss, but we can get the Snotling Scavengers. And I do believe that's all we can get. Yeah, that's a lot of Swindlers. We can probably sell those off soon. Hmm. Am I missing something? Well, if I am, it's too late now. Alrighty, this is gonna be the smallest, but hopefully one of the uh, more interesting battles. Although I think we've had some pretty fantastic battles in this campaign so far. WoW well, begins for you, my friend, just for that little bit of extra charge bonus. And away you... Could we upgrade you guys? Eh, eh, away you go. Alrighty, Valiant defeat you say. We'll see about that. Let's see how many peasant mobs and we can rip apart and with these crimson killers. Alrighty, folks. Well, if you didn't get enough of a Mr. Gutstabber or the Crimson Killers a last episode, I'm hoping that this little mini fight will give that to you. Plenty of enemies for the Crimson Killers to butcher. And then I do believe that we should have a fairly decent chance. And to winning this, plus we have a second unit, a unit of Orc Biggins, uh, here with us that does get summoned, so we do have them to rely upon to do a little bit of extra damage. Now the biggest threat on the field here is not the enemy lord, but rather the damsel, who has a flock of doom available to her and will thus repeatedly cast it. A single cast on the Orc Biggins alone did chip away at their HP somewhat, and we'll want to keep that away from any of our... Or, uh, from all of our units. In fact, this may be a reason to keep the Orc Biggins and the Crimson Killers away from each other, so that when the flock SC, as soon as we moved close, the Orc Warboss and the Biggins both got hit. So, uh, yeah, keep them away from each other so that the uh, infantry units don't both suffer Flocks of Doom. Now, I don't imagine the Flocks of Doom would do a crazy amount of damage to the Crimson Killers, mind you. But nonetheless, we shouldn't allow the uh, trickle of HP loss. 
as much as we possibly can avoid it, I mean. Anyway, time for them to start uh, working on that peasant mob. Just sort of a fun warm-up for them. And it looks like the peasant mob will shatter pretty much instantly, having lost about a, a half of their number in a few swings of those dual great axes. And very, very nice. Alright, too bad Mr. Gutstabba can't have uh, red armor with the uh, Crimson Killers as well. Honorary Crimson Killer as he is. Alright, he's gonna run after that unit of peasant mob. The idea, the idea here was to annoy them, hit them in the back, and force them to turn towards Mr. Gutstabba while the, uh, uh, the biggins start wading into them. Oh, I like this lighting as well. Very nice and idyllic. And picturesque. This is a perfect place to butcher the enemy peasantry. Anyway, how are we doing over here? Looks like some battle pilgrims are going to move in to reinforce those uh, peasant mobs, but the Crimson Killers have arrived and have started to drop those battle pilgrims. And there we go, the big Wa is now active and we're going to hit even harder. 129 weapon strength on these guys plus area attacks. Like the Depth Guard of the Vampire Coast, these guys are pretty darn fantastic at mincing masses of infantry like this because of their high attacks and their uh, uh, splash damage. And even if these weren't trash tier infantry, if they were uh, somewhat armored infantry, we have plenty of armor piercing on these guys as well. That's a solid unit. I mean, it is a tier 5 unit. 69 armor piercing weapon damage. Nice. Alright, well, keep on swinging away. You got plenty of peasants to work through, and that's another WA active again. 103 melee attack as well. Their melee defense is uh, fairly low, but once again, the enemy is having trouble getting through all that thick armor. Alright, those are some ba brave battle pilgrims and peasant mobs, though, you got to admit. And just heading into the meat grinder like this. I mean, this must be an absolutely horrific sight. The just ridiculously thick armor on these guys. These guys have pitchforks and stuff. <laughs> You're not going to do anything to them. You're probably not even going to annoy them. But that's the nature of sending peasant mobs and zombies and skaven slaves against elite units. The purpose isn't really to do damage so much as to bog them down, annoy them, and force them to lose. Uh, vigor, the Crimson Killers now being uh, tired. Certainly a unit that it might be a good idea to put the... Uh, uh, to put a banner of swiftness on for that perfect vigor. Anyway, let's check back on what's going on out here. Our lord, together with the unit of orc biggins, have managed to kill off another enemy unit of peasant mobs, and we have caught the enemy lord, and are now trying to keep him locked in place so that we can knock him out for good. It looks like one more hit will finish him, and there we go. Mr. Gut stab, uh, and does not stab him in the gut, but instead takes his head. And very nice. And while that is happening, the Crimson Killers have joined the fray once more and are once again and just butchering everything in sight. You know, it's a very different little battle, but I'm really enjoying this one, just as a, a little highlight of this great unit. 567, 8, 9, 70 kills so far. And we've got more where that came from. Alrighty, works forward and into the fray. These guys are having so much fun. There we go. Alrighty, and I don't know why the enemy appears to have used Vissen's wild form on this peasant mob. Okay, they got a little bit of extra armor and leadership and while they were routing. Odd choice from the AI, but I suppose the Flock of Doom wasn't liable to do a crazy amount of damage to our elite. So maybe, well, probably it would have still done more damage than a peasant unit with Sin's Wild Former now. Alright, back to a butchering. Yet another unit of peasant mobs moves in. Our Crimson Killers are still at 50 out of 50 units and have crossed over 700 kills.
I mean, we're... <laughs> I guess it's uh, one of the stronger infantry units in the game facing off against piles of the weakest or one of the weakest infantry units in the game, so it's a pretty darn big disparity, but it's an entertaining disparity. And that's all that uh, and that's all that one might like or want. Anyway, how are we doing? The bounce of power is very slightly in our favor now, surprisingly not more. Our lord is now trying to chase down that damsel, so she stops casting her damn spells. It looks like the biggins have engaged another unit of peasant mobs, and it's just a matter of breaking through those mobs, and then the, uh, and the battle pilgrims to round the battle out. Not much to say about this, there isn't really too much in the way of tactics, it's just uh, a good old-fashioned melee, meat grinder, attrition, etc. Though attrition only for the enemy. I guess if we spill enough of the, uh, if we spill enough of their blood, one of one or two of our, uh, uh, of our units might slip on the ground. So they will have achieved something all right and it looks like the peasant mob is out of there the crimson killer is still at full hp though it looks like the uh, battle pilgrims that have joined the other peasant mob are now starting to rout those biggins who did manage to get a nice 305 kills of their own uh, the enemy damsel also i believe ran away I think might have run off the map, in fact, as Mr. Gutstabba managed to chase her off. Very nice. No more spells to see, and it really, once again, doesn't matter what happens to our summoned unit of biggins. And the Crimson Killers should be able to take care of the rest. There we go, found some more battle pilgrims. Blood should be nice and visible on their, uh, uh, on their clothes there. At least they'll fight to the death. The rest of the enemy army, however, will not. As the bounce powers shift to a 90% in our favor, all the enemy peasants appear to be running, and only the single unit of battle pilgrims remains, though there are fewer and fewer battle pilgrims with every swing of their axes. Absolutely brutal. There we go, and Gutstab is back into the fray as well. He's got 55 kills to his name, nothing crazy, but he did defeat the enemy lord and and the enemy damsel and just spent the entire match annoying the enemy army. And there we go, the last battle pilgrim falls, and the battle is ours. I can't believe they moved up in a march stance like that. Tremendously foolish. <laughs> All right, there we go. I know they're only peasants, but still, I thought that was a pretty darn a legendary feat, if I do say so myself. And we lost ourselves two of the Crimson Killers, which ain't too bad, and I believe we can get them back via eating the captives, which I guess we should probably do. I mean... We can also ransom the captives. It's not like we care about the fightiness in this particular army. Also, nearly a hundred thousand damage. This unit alone. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, now now I'm attached to Gorkil Gutstab, so I guess we're gonna have to keep him around as our second orc war boss. Very happy with that performance. Uh, anyway, heal up a teensy bit to max out the Crimson Killers, because we might attack again. Or get to that ransom captives. Hmm. I don't know, I think argument can be made for either one. We do need the money, because we are losing money, and at the same time... Yeah, just take the money. I mean, two units lost isn't big enough to be concerned with. Alright, Scourge of Mankind. That, man, you became the Scourge of Mankind really quickly, buddy. <laughs> uh, enemy killed in battle, and you did level up. Swell. Go into regular stance now. 
And let's get you another point. Now, the point shall go to, I guess, another point in Deadly Blade. We're not going to keep the Crimson Killers in his army, even though I am... I do like the concept to some degree. Hmm. Alright, there is still this little army to destroy, but it's only a single unit of Knight's Errant and a Peasant Mob. So nothing problematic there. And in fact, I don't think we need Grimgore to deal with this. And this will mean we won't be able to kill Dorian Dubois, because I think we can't reach both. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. And I guess we'll have to kill this army first. Alright, well, this army we go. And you know what? Since they have Knight Serent, we're gonna spend some scrap finally. Scrap upgrades and... Well, actually, the Immortal's Armor would really help here, but I think we're still going to go for bonus versus large for the uh, for the dual-handers. Well, they already have bonus versus infantry. I assume you can have a bonus versus both. Let's find out. I hope they don't override each other. I've never looked into that. Hmm. No, longer weapons. Their weapons are pretty long, but you can always go... Uh, you can always go longer. Yeah. All right, so what do we have here? 20 and 8. I don't think that this is a thing on most units in vanilla. I, at least I don't recall it, so that's why I'm not sure whether they can override each other or not. Anyway, attack Malene here. And I guess we'll leave Grimgore to his own devices and also hope that we don't get destroyed here for our trouble. Hmm. We shall see. Uh, you, can, oh, you can actually auto-resolve this if you wanted to. I wonder how badly that'll hurt you, though. Close to victory, casualties low. Alright, you better not screw me on this game. Auto resolve. And, yeah, 25 units lost in the Crimson Killers. We can get, it looks like, not many of them back. Uh, I guess we'll ransom the captives. Alright, another swindler. And you gotta be kidding me, another potion of healing? Man, all of our lords are gonna get potions of healing. And good luck once again, blessed and by Gork and by Mork. Uh, you. Cannot march stand, so you're stuck out here. Decent likelihood that you might get attacked by these guys. Let's... Ah. Hmm. I am thinking about rewarding you. Maybe we give you the troll army and some black orcs and biggins. Take the biggins from Grimgore, because he's going to lose them soon. That could be a... Uh, that could be a thing we do. There's a likelihood that you can reach this guy as well. Probably not, right? I doubt it, anyway. Hmm. Let's move right here and give it a try. I don't think this will work. Yeah, it didn't work. Alright, and you can... Oh, you can't go in March Stance. I guess you can go out here and ignore this little army and then go into Raiding Stance out here and at least get some of that cash back. And Gore Kill. Alright, you're gonna move here. Start moving towards Grimgore. I'd like you to transfer those Crimson Killers as fast as possible. And just to keep you alive, I am very attached to you now, and you're not immortal. And let's get you the Swamp Tings. And I know that, uh, yeah, money wise, this is not the best thing to do, but we're gonna do it. Alright, hopefully, I don't screw myself over too hard. And I do believe we're ready to go for next turn, unless I'm mistaken, or unless I've forgotten something, which is distinctly possible, but I am going to go next turn. Anyway, so skip the low fightiness, and assign skill points, Garrison Lord not moved. Building upgrade available. And just to double check, you've moved, and you've moved where you're both supposed to be. Alrighty. And, oh, I just had an idea, and... Eh. I was gonna say, what if we could possibly... East out with the little Sigmarite faction. So that they don't attack these border territories. And then just attack them once we get our spider army or the other army in here. Oh, and it looks like Kurun is going to ignore Gorkil. And I also just had another idea. Yeah, wait. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let me figure this out. Uh, trespassing warning ignored long gi, giant spider for hack, and... Oh, speaking of hack, and speaking of things, wait, alright. Thing the first. Peace out with you. Oh, wow. You really want peace, huh? Uh, yeah, we'll come back and kill you later, just don't worry about it. Propose offer. We'll take the money. It's kind of worth it. For 11k? I'll... yeah, definitely. Then... 
Grimgor and Gorkil. Okay, okay, okay. Let's let's see. We got we got to do this right. Grimgor, you're gonna go into Wa Begins and hit Garnet. That's Gane rather, not Garnet, but whatever. And encircle it. Just working on it. Then you, sir, are going to go, I guess, into Wabi. Now you can't reach him. Go into regular stance, hit up Grimgore, transfer him his Crimson Killers. And like so. And then transfer. Then take, I guess, this unit of Orc Biggins, but obviously keep the Swamp things. And then you're going to auto-resolve this. Which will, as always, hurt our giants, and apparently hurt the Crimson Killers as well, but, uh, yeah. Occupy. A oh, lovely. Swindler, Swindler. Then you, sir, are going to head out to this side. And then Grimgore, you are going to lose your Wa. And the reason for that is apparently it's the Wa that makes, that, uh, kills all of their movement. See, Grimgore's back to 0 out of 167, rather than, uh... Uh, or rather than whatever it was because of the wasp screwing us over. So do really appreciate that tip, that one. Uh, and that one really helped me out. Hey, you, sir, Spite, go to Grasgar Castle and set up around here. By setup, I obviously mean raid. All right, getting our money, if not quite fixed up, a little bit better. Then what we want to do is several things. First of all, what do we have here? I would like to take, let's say, anybody move further? Leadership, all units and army, chance of interception, post-battle, eh, I don't like any of these. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, take one at, let's say, Castle Longy. Yeah, Castle Longy. Let's go for you, shiny lava. And then we're gonna send you out to sea. You're gonna find us an Azag, who I believe is out here. Uh, Grom, we will be encountering fairly shortly, so yeah. Uh, Raknik, you are going to move out of that attrition, start healing up, and then landing. You could land here and start moving this way. I know, I'll think about where to land him. I would like to grab that extra island if possible. Always a nice thing. And speaking of grabbing those islands, Mr. Nobber, go out to Trogland, or I guess past Trogland, and go for that island, and then sail out when you're ready to go. Very nice. And moving on in. Alright, who's low fightiness, by the way? Oh, you shouldn't be low fightiness, because we need the fightiness for the... Uh, or the Gabos, most definitely. Okay, well, that looks good to me. Ugh, the recruiter does not need to recruit because we need to fix our money first, though we are working on it. Let's do buildings next. Whale Coast will start with you. Actually, we won't because there's nothing to do here. Uh, Nagranath. And eh, just upgrade one of these things. Doesn't really matter which one. Gotta get those faction-wide bonuses. Heap of shiny stuff at Newland. Plane of battles. Let's upgrade that squig breeding farm to full. Squig breed farm, whatever. Uh, we really should destroy that boss pool, but in a little bit later. Uh, Gabo tunnels. Hmm. Wait. No, next turn, Conquato will be upgradable to tier 5. I hope I didn't screw somewhere else up that... Uh, no, the rest is fine. All right, almost screwed that up, though. Uh, Leoness, let's upgrade you to tier four, I guess. I guess for Leoness, and... I'm so stupid. Uh, probably raiding stashes over the Horde first, so we'll do that. And since we're at peace with these guys, we could delete both of these defenses, though I suppose there's probably enemies right behind them. Until we link up with Grom, we probably shouldn't do anything about that. But we can build the Bee Slayers here. Still of use, pretty much anywhere and everywhere. Alright, very nice. Uh, Dasson, let's upgrade the Boss Shack here. Sherwield Forest, you are going to tier 5 in 3 turns, so we'll ignore you. And then lastly, Longi, let's upgrade Gene. And let's get you, I guess... Can't get the Raiden Stasher, so we'll go for Pile of Shiny stuff, and let's upgrade Friggin' as well, and that's it. Alrighty, still negative money, but uh, we still have a bit of a nest egg, so we should still be able to survive. Alright, time to advance, skip, 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 and wait. Okay, your fightiness is low, I need to double check your fightiness. Yeah, your fightiness needs fixing as well. Alrighty, what's our goblin big boss is at? Uh, not good enough, and oh, 
Any good black orc big bosses? Unfortunately not. I wanted to give one or two to uh, uh, to Mr. Gorkil Agutsta because I think he needs a uh, coterie of uh, black orc big bosses with him. Since I'm attached to him now. Anyway, I believe that's it for this turn. Yes, I hope it is because I'm ending the turn. Will or can anybody attack here? Oh, I should double check that uh, one of the other armies doesn't have a little wah uh, that's screwing over their movement range. Obviously, Grimgor actually has massive movement range, so he doesn't really care as much about it, but the other is, uh, well, it might not be the same for them. Mission issued, War Machine Focus, Gore Kill, you're gonna go into Wa uh, Begins, you're gonna hit Kendai. Alright, Grimgor has no new wa. And Valiant Defeat, we'll see about that. Uh, get to that Razor Standard on those Zork Biggins. Oh, we should give him somebody to replace the Crimson Killers. Maybe a unit of Black Orcs. Uh, maybe a unit of Black Orcs with big ol' axes, similar to the Crimson Killers, and just call them the Gut Stabbers or something. I don't know, I really feel like he needs to be rewarded for his uh, performance. Anyway, we can go past all this, we can move Arachnic southward, and yeah, you do have a Wah, but frankly, you're gonna need it because you have all those spider units. And ah, still five out of five. Gotta get a few more of these damn goblin big bosses. You know what I really should have done? I should have milled through them. In fact, I know that that would have wasted a turn, but I'm tempted to mill through them right now. On the other hand, there's probably a new big boss shack coming in soon, so maybe it's not super necessary. You go. You go and find our, uh, our Mr. Azag. Grimgore, come here, sir. Then... Now let's auto-resolve this. Hopefully no one will die. And it'll hurt our giants again, but everything hurts our poor giants. Occupy. Alright, very nice, very nice. Two swindlers, two more swindlers. It's nothing but swindlers. And yes, we can reach Alan Khan. Alan Khan. Swindlers and cons. And auto-resolve. Alan Khan artists. Occupy. All right, and those giants will heal up. We won't be able to auto-resolve next turn by the looks of it. Ooh, they're uh, constructing at Kuran again, so we'll have to pay attention to that. More swindlers, always more swindlers, and we've encountered the Exiles of Corn. Ah, that's interesting. I wonder where they are. I think they're in Norska, but I could be wrong. Uh, anyway, Spite Blood Reaper, we could move you... Hmm, wait. Just take a look here. Okay, so this is all Bretonian territory, as in Kurun territory. So you can move past this. There should be a town here. Yeah. Us Ouission. It's like Moussion, I guess. Uh, Ugg the Recruiter, you're fine. Kruger Beard Taker, you're fine. Naba, you are going to move here to the remnants of battle, so away you go, bud. No, 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 wait. Uh, we need you to get the uh, teeth robbers. Oh, and we had just gone basically positive, too. And... yeah, you can't reach the thing. But you can get right up to it, so... I believe... Our remnants of battle will have a battle in it, so... yeah. Alright, and now you're good. Anybody else to move? No, it doesn't look like it, huh? Gonna be a few turns to advance, I guess. Now let's build some buildings, then. Whale Coast will start with you. And Gabo Town for you. Research and construction cost reduction. And go for the Savage Altar here in Lakeland. Plain of Battles. What was I going to build at the Citadel of Lead? We have the Squig Nest. I guess we'll build the Gabo Tents and the Pile of Scrap. Yeah, probably the way to do it. Gabo Tents, Pile of Scrap. I mean, it's not like we're going to make this another military hub, especially since it will probably generate decent money once we, well, fix the buildings. Conquata, ready to get upgraded to Tier 5, though insanely expensive. Leoness? Hmm. I also just thought of something. Our most money-making provinces like you, we could curtail the growth in favor of getting more money. I mean, I guess we don't directly get more money from any of the... Uh, uh, from any of the commandments, but we do get less money by virtue of the camp ruckus. Hmm. 
All right, we'll see. Maybe not now. We still need the growth, to be fair. Uh, you bus poles should get upgraded, and Kesselianus, you will also need those Raiden stashes. And boss pole. Nice. Lanas Hills, we got a dead heap of shiny stuff and another boss pole. Who run? I mean, I guess we can start upgrading you. What do you have here? A goblin toolbox, eh? Hmm. If we could get to a place where we could recruit a bunch of trolls, that might be helpful. Because then this army could essentially act on its own. Krun might afford some capturable stuff. Maybe we'll hope for that one. Also, what do we have here? A bunch of peasants. I think you can... Well, actually, can you? You don't have the Crimson Killers anymore. Hmm. You can recruit some pump wagons. They are cheap. A hundred gold per turn. I really wish they weren't two turns, though. Is there anything we can get for one turn here? We have a couple goblin archers. Uh, nothing, really. Also, before I forget, do you have a little mini wa coming in? Yeah. Take that out. Like so. And are you able to move? No. I mean, we should probably allow him to get his wa going, but frankly, by the time he reaches the place, it might be gone anyway, so it's not a huge priority. Anyway, back to building, building, Kuran, Europe, and I guess we'll immediately get you to tier three. Uh, Alan Khan and Alan Saw, probably. And let's go for a pile of shiny stuff and a pile of shiny stuff as well. And I guess we'll delete the goblin toolbox. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm tempted by the Snothling pump wagons here, but. Hmm. Probably not worth the two turns recruitment time, although here's what we could do. And just to get a few units into that army quicker, and get a cheap night goblin boss like uh okay, I don't really like any of these. I mean they're all uh, you know what I'm not wasting money on you, we'll do it later. <laughs> uh alright, let's uh let's get going to next turn. And try to keep our money in a reasonably decent situation. I really don't want to send Grimgore out here either, so I'm just going to hope that Gorkill can deal with it. Oh, and we'll have to check our goblin big boss recruitment levels again, because we do need two more for our spider army. And there's a good reason for which as well. Also on top of that, as somebody suggested in the comments, we do need armor piercing for the goblin army, which we can do via the upgrades. So scrap upgrades needs a tech, and that tech is called better our better error eds. All right, better error eds are if I can find them. Hmm, let's see them. Gore painting. Huh. Spider worship. Boar riding. Wolf breeding. Boar painting. Ah, it's right here. It's right in the middle of everything. <laughs> uh, Alright, and that scrap upgrade's unlocked for night goblins, night goblin archers, night goblin fanatics, and night goblin archers, fanatics. Yeah, ver various night goblins, essentially. Um, but it'll work. It'll most definitely work. I mm. also like to build the use them and abuse them, but once again, I'd rather save the money, at least for now. Uh, Spite, you're going to hit uh, Sion in a second. Go into Wah Begins, please. And you'll be auto-resolving that. I would also like Arachnik to move right here close to that mysterious island. And I guess we're going to have to quell animosity again, although... Nah, we need it. We need to do it. Spiders, yeah. The vigor loss on spiders ain't great. I also don't want to take attrition, though. Maybe we'll wait until we land. Hmm. I could also send him down to find Grom if we really want to, but anyway. And Grimgore. Ignore this. I just ignore it. Ignore it and go for Kuran, I guess. Is this the right thing to do? I think so. Uh, go out of the settlement. Like so. We could waste a turn to go here. Oh, wait, can you reach Kuran? Ah, no. If only. Now that would have solved the entire issue, because then Grimgore could have gone into March stance. I mean, there's not much here. Once again, if we had the Crimson Killers, I wouldn't even consider it to be a possible problem. But alas, we don't. It is forbidden. And I'm not sure if it's risky, if it's uh, worth the risk, because the Swamp Tings, I'm sure, are good, but their speed is low. 
Enemy Lord is a prophetess, though, and quite weak. Hmm. I mean, we have a Biggins here. Ah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, let's go for Kuran with you, sir, in the stance. And, oh, the Giants are still heard. Probably won't work. I mean, it will work, but it won't be auto-resolvable. It'll kill off our Giants. All right, looks like we're going to have to manually fight that. All right, we can fight that real quick. I don't think it'll be... Hmm, actually, I do have to wonder whether this is bugged as well. We'll see. Let's do everything else first, and then we shall see. Attack. And encircle. And we should level you up before we attack, just for a little bit of bonuses. First of all, at the cost of melee attack, I think it's probably a decent idea to give more armor to our goblin units. They're very lightly armored, after all, and uh, I think this is worth it. So, slapped on scrap. There we go. Not hitting us hard, but still good. Uh, we will need Soul Blight and Replenish Troops and Spirit Leech all maxed out for you. Wait, what is this? Character or leadership effect? You know what? Let's actually get that. Spirit Leech, Replenish Troops, Soul Blight, like so. All the stuff that we use the most. Then the Goblin Big Bosses, you can max out Scavenge, grab Elusive, and try to get into Slippery. Got our fighter for you as well, sir. Just double checking that there's nothing here that was super important, but there isn't. And you are trying to get to the biggest teeth, which are nearly there. Uh, this is a reduction for enemy war beasts, enemy armies in region, and this is enemy casualty right now. It's useless. And let's go stick 'em boys, and one point in troll piss, and then we'll go for the biggest teeth right after. And this and Shroomzen are the reasons why I want four of these goblin big bosses in our spider army. And they will give a decent amount of additional armor piercing damage to those spiders. Granted, it would also be quite beneficial if we were to give four of them in here, but might be a little bit much. Mm, both in terms of capacity and other stuff. Also, what do you have here? Okay, you're, you're good, you're good. Attack. Quick little auto-resolve. Eh, nah, it's not worth fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Barely any damage. And occupy, uh, sir. Very nice, very nice, though. Oh, hello, short victory. Yes, hero capacity. That's exactly what I wanted. Ah, uh, very nice. Very nice indeed. You two can stay as you are, Nobber. You can quickly auto-resolve this. Stay out of the wreck and I resolve it. And grab the money as we don't care about the fightiness at the current time. Come on, materials at sea or lost cargo. Yes. That's very nice as well. That kind of fixes our money situation for the six turns that we have it. All right. Go back to Trogland, a land there so that you reduce the cost per turn in terms of upkeep. Putting us to positive. Beautiful. Though you don't need that sort of swift slang, we'll replace it and, uh, you know, get us something more useful. Gore kill, we're going to have you kill this in a sec. Uh, let's move you here. You've still got a long ways to travel to find Mr. Azag. Gorkil, you'll deal with this. I want to double check the heroes now. Goblin big bosses. Beer connoisseur chop envy. I'm not a big fan. I mean, the charge bonuses could be useful to uh, to the spiders, I guess. I'd really prefer the cost reduction, though. Mm, yeah, you know what? I think we can waste a thousand gold. So crush a beard taker up and down and then Night Gaboloon up and down. All right. Oh, here's another thought. What we could do is get a giant river troll hag in this army. Ah, there's a shroom grower here. Very nice. All right, get you up. 2.4k and that puts us back to negative. <laughs> Uh, because of course it does, and I guess we can get you a swindler, even though I'm not sure that it works or does anything for you. There's buildings to build, but it's time to strike, so Grimgore, let's level you in, let's get to it. Uh, the big lads, and get back here, and then more importantly, ard lads to get those ard lads even harder. 
Very nice. Obvious the Nashi Giggle is obvious. And that'll be eight wards save for all of our orcish units, specifically the black orcs. A little bit of melee defense and a little bit of armor. The melee defense in particular will counteract the melee defense lost from Murray up, so nice. All right. Uh, Scram Deruffy, you have battle leader. And we could move through this to get We Are the Elite. I mean, you're already a pretty good fighter. Yeah, you know what? Let's get We Are the Elite. I like it. I like it. And we may even want to get Retinue Trainer. Nah, not really. <laughs> not that much. Uh, Grotslick, our legendary Orc Shaman. Are you maxed out in terms of magics? You are now. And get you Onslaught as well. Tough as nails and Onslaught. And for you, at least, we should probably get into Potent. To get that uh, plus to Winds of Magic for all units faction-wide. Next up, we have you, Giant River Troll Hag. What do we have here? Income from Raiding, Retinue Quartermaster, Leadership, and Notorious. I don't actually like any of those. Though the Retinue Physician isn't the worst thing in the world. Hmm. I'm still probably not going to use... Uh, Purple Sun that much, but nonetheless, we'll take Purple Sun for now. Word Mass. Doom and Darkness isn't all that useful to us. In fact, it's actually detrimental a lot of the time. And because we don't want enemies running from our Black Orcs, we want our Black Orcs, orcs ripping them apart. An Aspect of the Dread Knight, similar sort of uselessness. Yeah, I think we'll just start making her into a stronger fighter then. All right. And lastly, you, Mr. Nomnails, you are... Supposed to start moving towards battle leader as well, aren't you? Or we could go straight for we are the elite as well. You know, let's start with we are the elite. And back on your feet. And we want boss of the field for that vigor loss reduction for work units. Oh, we'll be one point short of arm to the teeth, but I guess we can get arm to the teeth after. Did the onslaught cooldown ain't bad either, but the vigor loss... That vigor loss. Alrighty, let's do this. Now, I don't know if cinematic battles are bugged in this particular uh, version. They didn't really work for uh, sieges in my Aranessa campaign, so I'm going to, I guess, double up on this one. If the cinematic battle works, it'll work, and if not, it won't, as in the siege cinematic. So I guess I'll commentate and fight, and then we'll see which one works. Let's find out. Alrighty, here we go. Let's see if cinematic sieges will work for the Greenskins. I'm going to head directly towards those enemy walls. Grimgore's army is all about that big old melee mob, but we don't have artillery to rely upon to either knock down the enemy towers or to... Uh, Eh, launching cows at us. Uh, or to knock holes in the enemy walls or gate. So we're going to take it the old-fashioned way. Obviously, our units of shielded black orcs are going to be moving forward. Shields up. And taking as many hits as possible from the relatively decent number of a peasant bowmen. And though it's the field traps that are going to be much, much more threatening. And both of the giants with their bonus damage versus buildings will go for that gate. And hopefully we'll be able to bring it down relatively quickly. And despite the lack of a ram, which you generally want to have in SFO. Now it looks like some fire arrows and pox arrows arcing over the enemy walls, but our ladders are going up and soon there will be black orcs atop those walls and there is no infantry that Britonia has uh, that will be able to hold against the uh, against the black orcs. So, and good luck to you. Gate is in pretty bad shape as well, having taken a third of its HP and just need to keep on hitting it and make our way into that settlement. All right, up we go. And it looks like the enemy's moving some spearmen at arms with shields to try to fight against the Black Orcs. Good luck. See one of these big boys coming over the parapet to you? Uh, uh, you gotta be pretty freaked out.
And you know these guys of uh, they probably get so much joy of coming over the battlements and then seeing just a pile of enemies right before them. They can just jump in and swing away with those choppers. Alright, well, how are we doing? The Spearmen at Arms have lost about, oh, maybe 20% of their HP. Nothing crazy so far, but it's not like we have a massive number of Black Orcs up here yet. More importantly, the gate is now down to one-third of its HP, and we just need a little bit more. Ah, I see Grimgor is moving away from the gate, which didn't happen when I was playing it, which means, unfortunately, it looks like just like the... Uh, uh, just like the ooh, foot of Gork, and as you can see, the foot of Gork doesn't hit anything. Uh, yeah, sieges are broken by the looks of it on this one as well. Huh. Okay, and it looks like, well, hopefully the giants keep hitting the gate. And we can still possibly watch this, I guess it depends on what exactly happens. Obviously, this isn't what happened, but it might still be entertaining enough. If it's not crazy different from what actually happened, it won't matter. I wonder if I replay... It's not cinematics that are broken, it's replays that are broken in SFO plus... Uh, uh, SFO plus whatchamacallit. Old World. Although, it... Huh. I'm just now wondering whether it could have been an update that actually screwed up replays. I just haven't seen Vanilla, and I'm just assuming that it's because these two mods aren't playing nicely. Who knows? Who knows? Well, anyway, everybody else is moving into the settlement. It looks like the, uh, uh, the giant river troll hag is here by herself. But because she has regeneration and debuffs the enemy, it looks like she's not super concerned. Some knights are moving in to fight the uh, black orcs, which have finally made their way off the walls. Which did happen, but I think it did happen a little bit later than it seems to have happened here. And also, all of these knights were blobbed up around the gate for when that, uh, uh, when that foot of gork came down. Well, it's okay, as we can clearly see, there are other units, a nice headbutt through those massive piles of men-at-arms with shields, and yeah, the gate's not down. Yeah, this keeps happening. I think one of the main issue appears to be the gates. For whatever reason, I encountered this in the replays of the Vampire Coast campaign, the Aranessa one. Uh, the gates seem to either not go down... Or your units seem to stop attacking them for some reason in the replay, as opposed to what actually happened in the battle. Nonetheless, so far this one's entertaining enough to watch. It's not like tactically there's much of a difference between this and the, uh, and uh, the way I actually played it. Because you just have to use your big old mob of... Uh, of uh, Black Orcs to overwhelm and the enemy defenders. Now, the enemy does have that unit of Grail Knights here with piles of Knights of the Realm and other stuff. Grimgor is moving on in. The enemy Lord is here as well, and I see that Spirit Leech coming down on him. In reality, I used that Spirit Leech when the Lord was down to a sliver of HP to ensure that he died after Grimgor smacked him around. Now, the Grail Knights as well would have died to work, at least gotten heavily damaged and by the foot of Gork spell. And they're full HP here, which is allowing them to get a few more swings in. Which I actually can't complain about, because we get to see these uh, two very elite units face up. Which wasn't quite available when I, uh, when I played it, mostly due to crushing the enemy with that spell. Alright, how's that balance of power? Looking about 80% in our favor. I don't think any of our units have died thus far, though it does look like this Black Orc unit is a little bit hurt. It didn't actually get that hurt when I played it, once again due to the actual proper hit of that spell. But once again, still entertaining enough to watch. At least I'd like to hope so. Anyway, how are we doing up here? Grimgor making his way further into the enemy cell, or at least his uh, troops making his way further into the enemy settlement. We're trying to get to those field trebuchets to silence them. A few other units are making their way towards this barricade here, which we will hopefully soon destroy and start hitting the enemy from this side as well. Alright. 
And the Giants are trying to help out. And those savage roars in there to buff everybody up and then also to try to destroy the rest of those Grail Knights. And the massive amount of HP damage that they deal. The Giants, I mean. Should make them adept at, a reason, at occasionally knocking out a unit or a model in those Grail Knights. How hard do you hit right now? 941 with all the buffs up, plus Bonebreaker on top of that, so yeah, pretty good. Very hard hit and a nice debuff. Looks like the Grail Knights and Realm... Knight, Realm Knights? Knights of the Realm here now starting to be in trouble. I have lost sight of the enemy lord as well. It does appear that he is still in the fray, um, but I doubt for too much longer as he is losing HP. Our two war bosses are making their way up the hill and towards those trebuchets, though they are continuously getting blocked by knights. And they just have to ask them or ask them some poignant questions. until they're allowed to pass through and towards those artillery pieces. And they are getting closer and closer with, as usual, the Crimson Killers leading the way. Once again, very, very happy with this unit. And they have a lot of experience butchering peasants, and thus they will continue applying it to all of these field trebuchet crews. Alright, the first of the trebuchets goes silent, and the second one I'm sure will follow suit shortly. Still a few of our units of Black Orcs getting taken down by the enemy... Uh, uh, by the enemy built tower, but it looks like the balance of power is about 90% in our favor. Grimgor has won, the enemy lord is dead, and so are his Grail Knights, and the rest of the enemy army will shatter. Certainly a little bit different than the way I played it, but not sufficiently different to not to make the battle a cinematic since I think it uh, looked better this way I will probably play it by ear and decide as to which other sieges will be cinematics versus me just playing them the regular way depending on how different the siege ends up being anyway All right, there we go. Not much in the way of losses, but that was roughly as expected. It would have been nice if our uh, giants were at full HP, as I imagine then it would have allowed us to auto-resolve it. We did, however, manage to see that the foot of Gork is still very effective, even against Grail Knights, so that will be, uh, that'll be good information to have in the future. Occupy the place. All right, another Swindler, another Snotling Scavengers. What target occupied? And, uh, well, mission not quite complete but still nice uh what do we get here a fighting pit eh? a fighting pit that would allow us to build orc biggins though they are both expensive and they take quite the while to build here hmm hmm what you ask is impossible I don't think what I ask is impossible, but okay. Uh, let's see. What do we have here? All oh, right, the Goblin Toolbox. Now nah, I'm still going to delete the Goblin Toolbox. Let's face it, we're not going to build them right now. If we leave... Hmm. I'm just wondering whether we should attack this little army at all. Or leave it where it is, but I fear that we're going to have to attack it. All right, did I do buildings already? No, apparently I did not, so we gotta build them now. Uh, start with the Shaman's Hovel. We're supposed to get those up and running. Lost Valley, I guess you're up next. And we are moving at Tier 5. So we can freely upgrade you and freely upgrade them. Gabo Tunnel, Sherwield Forest, we're waiting for that Tier 5. Gisoro. Uh, we're probably not going to upgrade you right now. And Kessalongi, yes to the heap of shiny stuff, and yes to the boss's shack, and yes to more shiny stuff, and start collecting income. Nice. Actually, it makes up for some of the uh, money situation issues that we were having. Anyway, Gorkill. I guess we just keep on making you a fighter. Well, I suppose we know that we're going to put some boys in your army and some trolls. You get the big lads or the boys. Both of them would be fine. I guess we'll start with the big lads. 
Not that Foe Seeker wouldn't be nice. We could try to get you some Feral Wyverns as well, but I think you are indeed going to be our uh, our troll army. Not in this world or the and I guess we're going to fight you as well. All right, and they will probably not run from this. We could get the Durkit Squigs in here. Hmm. That would probably make this a lot easier. They're only 223, and we could disband them immediately and then wait until they're uh, ready to go in the squig army. Yeah, you know what? I like that idea. Let's do this, and then we'll attack. If we had the uh, the troll hag, I would have put her in here, but like this now. And do we want to watch these guys fight? You know what? We haven't seen the river trolls fight, and we haven't seen Durkit Squigs fight, so why not? Another little mini cinematic just for fun. Alrighty, here we go again. Mr. Gutstabba is back for more action, and he's got a few friends along with him. The Swamp Things are River Trolls, which are going to be pretty effective at uh, ripping mobs of enemies apart, I would imagine, as well as our first unit of Squigs, uh, the Durkitz Squigs, a Night Goblin Squig Hopper Regiment of Renown. Obviously, we'll take the Squigs to uh, hop along until they find some peasant bowmen, and then rip into them with their anti-infantry prowess, while the rest of our units try to mince the melee infantry, and our lord tries to hunt down that enemy damsel and prophetess. As to whether that's going to work out, we shall see, though it looks like they are too busy casting spells to back off. And that ain't gonna be so great for him. Get a few more hits in there while you can. We should be able to force that enemy lord to rout quickly. And it looks like the Swamp Things and the Biggins have engaged in the background. I saw an Uranon's Thunderbolt hit right into our piles of uh, Biggins. Although the enemy has lost about a nearly half of the HP on that lord for their trouble. Durkit Squigs are making their way in, and ooh, looks like they've caught a unit of mounted yeomen. Surely should have gone after the peasant archers or bowmen. Um, but let's knock out the mounted yeomen first, so that they're not a threat. And then we can go back to the peasant bowmen without the enemy light cab harassing us right back. Seems to be the way to do it. And since we only have the one use of our net spell, better to, not, uh, to uh, lock these guys in place and destroy them as they are quite fragile. Alright, how are we doing in the main battle? That's a lot of peasants there. Too bad we don't have a nice foot of gork to clear them all out. The swamp things are just vomiting all over those peasants. Too bad we can't take advantage of their aquatic trait, but we'll be fine. And uh, debuffs on those peasants, melee attack down to 22. And of course we have that explosion ability as well, which makes these guys particularly nasty. How are we doing in the background? It looks like the enemy lord has been caught again. And one more swing from that dread chopper and the prophetess and goes down. The Durkit Squigs have caught the units of peasant bowmen now that they're not distracted with the enemy unit of mounted yeomen. And now we'll just run down all those poor, poor peasants with squigs and with trolls. Looking like uh, Mr. Gutstab is going to pull off yet another win with tiny amounts of troops. A very odd army, but yeah, now we absolutely have to keep him around and give him a proper force as a, uh, as a reward. All right, River Trolls waiting back into it. Not to worry, we'll be using more trolls throughout the uh, campaign. And just like that, uh, there we go. The enemy army will suddenly shatter. Far too many peasant mobs in this particular army. They just don't have the leadership to stand up to the... Uh, uh, to stand up to the loss of their lord, and thus soon after the prophetess fell and the, uh, uh, the damsel got run off field, the entire enemy army shattered. 
I'm going to do a little bit of chasing. I'm pretty sure this army will get destroyed either way, but I'm not 100% sure and I wasn't willing to risk it. So a little bit of extra damage wouldn't hurt anyway. 434 kills and 50k damage into Swamp Tang, so very, very nice. And the Dirkid Squigs didn't do too bad either. We'll make a comparison after the battle is over, which is now. All right, well, the squigs really helped us out there. 51k damage on the Swamp Tings, 25 on our single Orc Biggins, and 27 on the squigs, plus uh, the uh, uh, the 8.3k on Gorkil, who did manage to knock out that uh, enemy Lord Prophetess, which was a very nice doing. Uh, we are going to, I guess, ransom captives, because once again, I don't think we really care about the fightiness in this army, and we'll need to chase down and destroy what remains and hey perfect vigor man Gorkil I'm really proud of you man Here we go. you do good work on a result let me guess this is gonna hurt our army more than the battle did eh, not that much more uh, let us get and get ransom captives again to get that uh, fast buff we get more growth for the faction and yeah, let's get more growth all right, another sword of battle, and I think that's two swords that we found this particular episode, so we can turn them into something better. Swift Slaying plus Sword of Battle. Fuse. Into another Helm of Discord. Ooh, a very nice find indeed, and we'll put that on a you. Not the Potion of Healing, those are reserved for Lords, but Helm of Discord I think is a pretty good uh, thing to put on the River Troll Hags. More debuffs. You... We'll probably now want to move towards Ho, Ho Ma, but Mont, I don't know. And yeah, uh, you'll need you'll need actual units to do this though. Maybe we should just sit here and recruit some biggins for a little while, even and despite the unpleasant climate and the fact that it'll take him three turns. Grimgor can oh, well I guess Grimgor could travel this way. And oh, hell though. We have an army here. It's in March stance as well. Oh wait. If you leave this place, nah. I was thinking, hey, what if he could go into ambush? But obviously, yeah, uh, obviously he cannot. Anyway, let's get some Ashim of Fastest. Spike Blood Reap is getting to be reasonably effective, and the next turn we'll have upgrades for our Night Gabos as well. So we'll be maybe able to make them stronger with scrap. All right, let's see if there's anything else left to do this turn. I did the buildings, I think. I think the ones that we have left are the ones that we don't need to deal with. Yeah, but I did have to double check. But the rest is fine. Uh, do we upgrade you? I mean, at 810, it's not such an investment that we really care about. What I do care about is not you, but you, Shaman. First of all, you guys can steal tech. Second of all, we'll need a Shaman probably in Gorkil's army. Hmm. Or is the river troll hag sufficient? I mean, if it's a troll army, we could double up on river troll hags. But I will miss that foot of Gork. There will be no big spells to rely on. And there will be some biggins, so we could do a shaman as well. I feel like he deserves a shaman. Yeah, alright. Uh, we don't have any of the little wa, but we can... Or the night goblin shaman, we can get some of those and other ones. Uh, let's get a shaman here. Big bully... No, shiny lava probably doesn't work. Braga doesn't really help, and... Oh, wow, I don't like any of these. Eh. I mean, if he's going to recruit for three turns, I guess we can wait. We might be able to replace one. All right, low fightiness ignored. Lord not moved ignored. Unassigned skill points ignored. Garrisons, upgrades, all ignored. Double check Diplo since I barely ever take a look at it, but, you know, it's orcs, so... Why would I... And I guess we're good to go. And turn. Oh, I should have double-checked Grun's buildings. I forgot whether I immediately deleted stuff there or not, but I guess we could do it next turn. Not a big deal either way, and every turn advanced is a turn closer to Grom and closer to Azag. And... Okay, looks like they're not going to attack. Curious. 
Curious indeed. Uh, these guys are here. Oh, Owen's back. I'm willing to bet that he won't fight, and he has nothing but peasants to his name anyway. Uh, huh. What's the best way to do this? Also, how long until we can declare war on these guys again? Uh, seven turns. Okay, so a while. A while. Maybe I shouldn't have peaced out with them. I'm not 100% on that. Yeah, Grimgore can reach Luan, but obviously there's no way the Luan fights. I guess Grimgore is moving this way. We'll move to Oma. And hope that the Gabos can handle themselves over on that side. Yeah, I should have deleted... The oh, no, right, right, right. We were going to use it to uh, get stuff up and running. Yeah, right, that's fine. Grimgore, take this. Should be auto-resolvable. And, yeah. Occupy it. And are we level 30? Indeed we are. So we do have... Ooh... We have multiple things. First of all, global recruitment capacity plus three. It's decent, but it does take... Ooh, recruitment costs minus 25 for all units. That's nice. Corruption minus two, meh. Recruitment duration minus one. Ah, uh, ooh. Gotta go with the recruitment duration. Yes, recruitment cost is great. Don't get me wrong. But I think duration is better. And it's just for everything. Get out of here. What you looking at? All right, nice. And yeah, the big and rogue idol. I want that in this army. As soon as we have a decent amount of cash. And the Arachnorok Queen for the Gabos as well. All right, it's like 1,500 gold worth in just uh, those two completely unnecessary units. And yet so necessary. Uh, you, sir. You can reach out to Ma. And is there anything that helps recruitment here? No, there is the brag about the boss buff, though. Hmm. Yeah, let's go for brag about the boss for the movement. Grimgore, you can immediately leave the settlement and head towards the other territories. Gorkill, you can move into Otma, and now it should only take two turns to recruit a few of those biggins. Unless I'm wrong. But I don't think I am. And I really want that. Uh, yeah, two turns. And we can recruit the weak units in one turn. Huh. Maybe we shouldn't pay for the ludicrously expensive uh, black orcs and just deal with some gobos for now until our money is fixed. I'm sure he can. I can pull it off. You know, let's get some. Let's get four night gobos in here. And we'll keep the single unit of orc biggins. Can we get any squigs from here? I want a second squig, you know. Ah, they can take two turns, though. Not he. Yeah, yeah. We'll get some more care boys as well. All right. It'll be more expensive than I'd like, but at the same time, we should be able to deal. All righty. Uh, Spite Blood Reaper, and oh, wow, we are running out of time. And it's not like you can fight right now, anyway. Mm. What I would like to do for you, though. Good sir, is yes, spiky weapons are now available. Yeah, leadership is also nice on the uh, basic gabo units. What the heck? Yeah, 48. It's pretty darn low, but I nonetheless think that armor piercing is going to be super valuable. And it's plus 5. It's quite a bit. Yeah, spiky weapons for all of you. And this is going to cost a scrap, obviously, but uh, it's necessary. Spiky weapons for you, sir, and spiky weapons for you. I keep wanting to say spicy weapons. Like so, and like so. We do have to be a little bit careful with our scrap, though. We do have this available on... Oh, plus 25% range or reload time plus 20%, and I guess the, you guys have the same. Hmm. Do we want range on the Night Goblin Fanatics? Or effectively 20% increase in DPS? Frankly, their range is their biggest issue. I'm inclined to say range, even though it's nothing crazy. Go winged ammo. This puts you up to 163, and then you guys will be even better than that. Or we could give you the DPS increase. Hard to say. Yeah, winged ammo on all of you. Yeah, needed. 163 is a lot more manageable. That's slightly better than regular work error, boys. And at least we have spent some scrap this way. I'm going to hold off on upgrading the uh, the Rusty Errors, though, because I'm not 100% on it yet. Do we get any extra range out of this? No, we don't. 
Do we get any extra range yet? Okay, we have the gobos. What about... Uh, oh, it's just missile strength. Damn, I was hoping for a range upgrade. Even a slight one would have been swell. I guess the only range upgrade we get are for the... Uh, for these guys, yeah, Missile Cavalry and Chariots, not for the regular ones. Oh well. Anyway, with that, we are out of time, folks, and I am going to have to call the episode here. Next time, Grimgor continues advancing through the territories of Carcassonne and Kurun alike. We'll see if we can't get our uh, Spite Blood Reaper into combat with Lewin and possibly any other armies that are out here. We are at war with more factions, and we haven't really encountered Alberix, so we are liable to run into them soon. Uh, we'll run and wait, you can grab that mysterious island right now. Uh, I was about to say we'll land Rocknick somewhere and have him do some stuff. Press ganged, channeling stuff. Maybe should have gone for the uh, buff for the spider army, whatever. And maybe even land him right here and then raid his way through these territories on the way here. We are very close to linking up with Grom, who clearly is right here. So it might actually happen next episode. And the same with possibly more fight and action for Nobber. As he will start finally moving towards enemy shores and will hopefully uh, get a little bit of a debut for his rather interesting army. Anyway, more orcs to come, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially to Threshold. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.